Hunter. Hi, Alice. It's all right. Go ahead and sit down. So Hal decided that he would leave his men and the Hessians here along the Jersey Shore while he enjoyed a warm, comfortable winter, dancing away the, uh, the evenings with his mistress in Lower Manhattan. Come on, Mrs. Rivers. He didn't go to Lower Manhattan with his mistress to dance. <laughs> yes, they were really dancing, William. You can call it what you like, but I will call it dancing, okay? Now, Washington needed to do something very bold, and it had to work. So, what happened the day after Christmas, 1776, Alice? Um, he recrossed the river, surprised the Hessians, and captured Morristown. Trenton. Right. All right. She meant Trenton, and she's absolutely right. It was a complete surprise and a total success. Washington took 900 prisoners and lost nobody. Uh, two froze. Two froze. <laughs> I stand corrected, Arthur. Now, this was the turning point of the war, okay? Howe was probably the only British officer who had a chance to crush the American Revolution. And he blew it. Now, this is very important. I want you to remember that. Paul. He used Durham boats to cross. They were about 35 foot in length, real sturdy. They were freighters before the Revolution. Um, he'd collected everyone within 20 miles of Trenton beforehand. Smart. Okay, trip planners, my house Saturday, tomorrow, 4 o'clock, right? <laughs> Man, I'm late for something. I'll be back in a couple hours to finish this up, okay? I'll see you later. Hey, Paul, when you come back, I want you to start on these arms. Hi there. Hi. Come on. Sorry, I'm late. It's okay. How'd it go? Well, it went pretty well, actually. Um, apparently, there was a problem with the motel reservations in Charleston. Alice took care of it. Want some coffee? Yeah, please. Now, you tell me about the transportation. What about the bus? The bus company needs the money by Wednesday. Cash or certified check. Okay, we're all set. Peggy will have it by Tuesday. Now, if we can afford to see Fort Sumter, I'd really like to do it. Uh, they're going to give us a discount. I told them that we are students with a special interest in the Revolutionary and Civil War. And they'd really like to hit all the sites. So you charmed them right into it, didn't well. you? My night table took most of the punishment. Did you fall? Why, hello, young man. Hi. Grand, this is Paul McCormick. Paul, my grandmother. I'm sorry I'm not dressed for the occasion. We don't often have so handsome a young man in this room. Grand. Nice to meet you. Goodbye. Uh, oh. You gonna be all right? Oh, I'm fine. Can you stay put for just a second? Thank you, Paul. Sorry I was late. That's all right. I'll see you Monday. Bye. Where are the Washingtons of today? Not in the halls of Congress, I'll tell you that. They're teaching in the schoolroom, underpaid. How long have you been seeing that young man? Who? The one who was up here this afternoon. You mean Paul McCormick? Hmm? Grand Paul McCormick is one of my students. We didn't have students like that when I was teaching. I hope you're going out tonight. Yes, I am. I'm going to meet Arlene for a drink. Oh, socialize. Meet someone. How many dates have you had since Jamie passed on? Two in three years? Now, I'll be just fine. They're reading James Joyce on the radio. Ulysses. Oh, he's a wonder to listen to. Graham, I talked to Mrs. Kramer. Now, she'll be by both nights that I'm in Charleston and twice during the day. Please don't argue with me, please. Just think of it as a favor that you're doing for me, okay? And I've had five dates in three years for your information. Oh, this darn hip. I belong in a home. Do you hear me? Yes. Where else am I to meet handsome men of my vintage? 
I don't know, Gran. You're a very rare year. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. We're going to the bars for a beer. Let's go. How are you going to get there, Ro? Hey, these oars are the property of Mrs. Fink. They have been what? in the Fink family for three generations of dinghies. <laughs> they have to be sanded and farnished. I thought you might enjoy that, Jack. A little physical therapy. Yeah, yeah. Well, otherwise you get to do it, right? Yeah, hey, how'd you guess that? <laughs> Come on, let's grab some beer, maybe meet some girls, and you can feel sorry for yourself in public, huh? <laughs> That's real thoughtful of you, Paul. Maybe I'll get to meet a girl with one arm. <laughs> <laughs> Not if I see her first. <laughs> I'm going to grab a sandwich. I'll tell you what, why don't you clean up a little? Go. Give yourself a shave or Go. something? Come on. Yeah. All right. I'll see you in a little bit. I've got some stew. No, thanks, Mom. I'm going to be leaving in a couple minutes. Who? Where's the fire tonight? Paul, oh, I called the school, and they told me that you never did file those applications. That's what I told you, Mom. Would it be so terrible just to apply? If I apply, I go. inspire your brother to go back if you did. I can barely inspire him to go out and have a beer with me. How am I going to inspire him to go back to college? What's to become of him? As soon as he feels better, he'll probably buy another motorcycle and kill himself. Paul, don't ever say a thing like that. I'm only kidding, Mom. He likes going fast. Take him with you, huh? I'm trying. I know that. Oh, Paul, your father's due back Sunday and you never painted the porch and he'll be looking for that. Yet. I haven't painted it yet. Never doesn't begin until Monday. <laughs> and you never clean up after yourself. All right, now it is second and goal. And we're the ball is inside the 10 of the 9. And Carter goes in motion left. Mosley looks. So anyway, Eastern is sending the tickets and then I get on the bus to go to the airport and I'm all set. Did I tell you I've been running two miles every day? It's the best exercise for thighs ever invented. I mean, my legs are really getting tight. It's just in time for the beach, too. Linda? occur to you that your grandmother might be stunting your social life? Listen, if it hadn't been for Gran when Jamie died, I don't think I would have made it. My mother wants me to think about putting Gran in an institution. She's afraid she'll become a, a burden. Well, isn't she? No! No, not to me. No. You know what my grandmother did last week? What? She called one of those nursing homes. She told them she was me, and she asked that they had to me, for her. See? Do you see that guy at the end of the bar? The end, do you see the one I mean? He's not staring at you. He's not staring, he's leering. Uh-oh, that guy is coming over. Okay, first come, first serve, all right? Can I buy a drink? No. Keep them alone. Oh, sorry. Pete, this is Linda no, Rivers. No, thank you. Thank you very much. No, thanks. Some other time, Ed. Sure. <laughs> Maybe another time. Good night, Pete. Don't do that to me, Arlene. He had ten fingers. He's a perfect specimen. All right. I ask no questions. Remain lonely. See if I care. Arlene, I just don't have your... My intelligence and good looks, I know. Ooh. Paul McCormick just walked in. What's he like? He's a good student. He's sensitive and a little shy. Shy? Paul McCormick? He doesn't have a shy reputation with the girls in my class, I'll tell you that right now. His brother is supposed to be a big ladies' man, too, I hear. Or was. Well, it's 
Gilbert. Mrs. Rivers. Hi, Paul. This is my brother, Jack. Jack? Hi. Paul, have you ever dreamed of dancing with an art teacher? Do you like to dance? Why not? I'll be right back. Yeah. Maybe they should enter a dance contest, huh? Would you like a glass? No, no, thank you. The waitress is bringing one. I, I used to come here a lot. Now my little brother has to drag me. It's pretty persuasive, huh? Mr. Rivers, my brother sets his mind to it. He can talk a pig into a ham sandwich. <laughs> Some pills off some guy in the street. Oh, come on, right. Right. Easy. Right, right. Boots. Right, go call Cam. Uh, uh, come on, do we easy. need an ambulance? Oh, no. Right. Boots? Oh, come on, oh, easy, easy. Is oh, he oh. all right? Yeah, we're gonna be all right. We just oh. better get him in the hospital. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, 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 oh. Here you go. Oh. Just breathe. Can I do anything? Come on, Boots. Mrs. Rivers and I are going to go with you. Come on, Mrs. Rivers and I are with you. Oh. We're gonna be okay. Come on. Oh. Everything's gonna be all right. Then he'll be okay, Mr. Rivers. I think he's more scared than anything else. I'll keep him with me in my room. Call me every half hour, will you? Thanks, Paul. If you really want to do something else, and you don't think you're ready for college yet, I think it's okay to take a year off and try it. Is there something? I'd like to race. Race what? Sailboats in the America's Cup. Oh. That's my dream. Someday I'm going to do it. I bet you will. First, I just have to get past my mom. She thinks going to college puts you in a state of grace. Would you like for me to talk to her? No, thanks. I just wanted to know what you thought. Expert opinion and everything. <laughs> I've been sailing before. I really liked it. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I never have been racing or anything like that. Hey, you want to come with me sometime? It goes pretty fast. Scary? Yeah, a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. You know, it seems to me that you really know who you are. That's pretty rare for someone your age. It's really pretty rare for somebody my age. Anybody. <laughs> hey, let me take your picture. No, I don't oh, like that. Come on, just one. Just one. I don't like to have my please. picture. 
Got it. I Beautiful. It. I don't like that. Okay, one more. No, don't take any more. Oh, I can't take a picture of your hand. Come on. Got it. Oh. <laughs> Everybody? Everybody? <laughs> Come on up here. Let's talk a little bit about where we are, and then we'll go get some lunch. chores that I can never get done while we're in school. sale you promised you going out yeah you mean right now why not yeah come on okay you picked a perfect day for it Come 
Sean McCormick. Let's work. I've got a date at 4 o'clock. Listen to me. You're getting one coat out of me, and that's it. And I am not painting this floor. Beat sitting inside, don't you? Just remember, this is supposed to be your job. Oh, yeah. I forgot. You're out of commission. Oh, lousy town's out of commission. Do yourself a favor, Paul. Get the hell out of here before you get stuck. Hey, if you hate it so much, why are you staying around, huh? You're the one who's graduating. So what? So you've got decisions to make. I've already made my decisions. Right now, I'm going to continue working at Mass till I have enough saved up for my own marina. But what about you, huh? You should be back at school. Oh. Yes. Hey, I'm good at some things, like boats and sailing and stuff. But you're good at a lot of things. I mean, you could be a lawyer, a writer, a painter, a okay. musician, okay. an artist, okay, an Paul. You know, they take people with one leg at law school. Look, I don't... You are the worst painter I ever saw. Second worst. The worst. Look at this. You missed a spot. Well, one spot. You get it. It's right here. Would you like some cider? I can make some. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah? Okay. Uh, why don't you follow me home? Okay. Hey, Mrs. Rivers? Linda. Linda? Yes. It's a life jacket. Drink it when she wakes up. So, what are you going to do the rest of the vacation? Uh -huh. 
just the cat races and work. Linda. I know. Do you want to? Yeah. <laughs> Let's think about it. Okay. Um, what do you want to do? I want to think about it. I think we should. Okay. Good night. thought about it, and after 60 seconds of careful deliberations, I've decided I'd like to see you again. How about tomorrow? No. Why? Because I think we should give it a few days. Well, what difference is a few days going to make? We're going to feel just as awkward then as we do now. Look, let's at least give it until the end of the week. We're going to be practically back in school again, and I'm going to feel real weird if I don't see you before history class. Uh, well, I, I, I know what you're saying. Why don't you want to see me? I do. How about tomorrow? We'll go horseback riding. Tomorrow. Okay, what time? Noon. Okay, tomorrow noon. Good night. Goodbye. It's all right. 
You don't have to tell me. It's okay. I don't mind. We can talk about it. It's okay. He was, uh, he was warm. And he was funny. He was very funny. <laughs> funny guy. <laughs> when he forgot that he was a lawyer, he could be a real stuffed shirt. But he really didn't like to sit behind a desk all the time, so he learned how to do uh, a bunch of other stuff. He learned how to ski and uh, he went skydiving. That was when he got interested in planes and he got his pilot's license, which was unfortunate. Were you happy? Sometimes. <sighs> Thanks. For what? For asking. So... When are we going to have that end of vacation talk? I think we're having it. Oh. So. So? What are we going to do? It's going to be real hard calling you Mrs. Rivers again. Paul, I think. Yeah. Well, Paul, it's been a great two weeks. No, that's not what I was going to say. I don't think you have to be sarcastic. What, should I be sentimental? Paul, it's been a wonderful two weeks. No, that's it. It's even worse. Hey, look. We really don't have a lot of choices, do we? We knew what was going to happen. Maybe you did. I didn't have it all figured out. Oh, wait a minute. I don't have it all figured out either. I'm... confused. All I... All I know is, is that for the first time in three years, when I go to sleep at night, I don't think about Jamie. I think about you. Makes me happy. But it also, it's pretty scary. So I'm confused. Take me home. about this college business. She wanted me to have a word with you. Dad. I take it you still like working for Matt Troops. Yeah. I want my own marina. That's what I'm after. Well, that's a good goal. I'm thinking about college maybe later on. Well, don't rule it out. I'm not. How's the female situation? Pretty good. Someone special? Yeah. I'd like to meet her. I uh, appreciate what you're doing with that brother of yours. We gotta keep after him. Get him out doing things. That's what I'm trying to do. Well, thanks for the lift, son. See you in ten. We'll see ya. Have a good run, Pop! The country was depressed almost to the point of giving up. In the uh, fall of 1780, in October, Washington wrote, 
We have been half our time without provision and are likely to continue so. We have no magazines nor money to form them, and in a little time we shall have no men, even if we had money to pay them. We have lived upon expedience till we can live no longer. It wasn't until Nathaniel Green became quartermaster general that the Revolution Army, the Revolutionary Army, was even decently outfitted at all. And by decently outfitted, I mean uh, shoes and uh, jackets, blankets, things like that. I'm talking about the real basics. I'm not talking about deodorant and the other little goodies. Uh, now, this was, uh, this was in the fall of 1780, and then the new year brought us 1781, and what happened that made things begin to look up for the Patriots? Doreen. Uh. <laughs> okay, okay, what does he do? He's a terrific scuba diver. No, Arlene, what does he do? Oh, shoes, he sells shoes. Oh. Yeah, he's a manufacturer's rep in the Northeast. You know, he sells all the big chains and everything. Oh, Lindy, you should have seen me snorkel. <laughs> Divorced? Mm. Separated. Arlene, about to be separated. Oh, I don't, I don't want to hear about it. I had a ball. So did you, I heard. What? Oh, Linda, this is a small town. No, what did you hear? I heard you were seen with one of your students. So? So? Oh, Linda, come on, you can tell me. I'm your buddy. Arlene, what are you assuming without even asking me? Were you? I gotta go. Linda, I think it's terrific. Look at if I have tenure, I would probably be doing the same thing. I'll go out to see you tomorrow. What are you trying to do, spook me? I tried to get Jack to come with me, Mom, he wouldn't. Paul, I know you've had a lot of experience with women. What? Well, you've always been honest with me, as far as I know. And I want you to answer a question. Okay. Have you been seeing uh, this teacher from school? This... Mrs. Rivers, have you been dating her? Where did you hear that? Paul, oh, please answer me. Yes. Yes. Okay, no. I don't. Don't play games with me. I told you the truth. Well, I didn't want to upset your father, so... Can't you see what women like that are after? You're supposed to be so bright. You really don't know what you're talking about, Mom. Well, I know about these and the anonymous letters. Oh. I mean, how could you do this to us? And we've been so terrible to you. I haven't done anything to you. Do you think that the people writing those letters are the only one who knows? Everyone in this town must know by now. You make it sound disgusting, Mom. We happen to like each other. She is your teacher. A big deal. She's a person, isn't she? She happens to be my teacher, yes. She could just as easily be my doctor or my mailman. She is twice your age. So what? She's eight years older than I am. You're three years older than Dad. No, I will not have this. No. Well, I'm not going to stop seeing her because you won't have it. Then on Monday, I'm going to see Mr. Kiernan. He is the president of the school board, and I'm telling him exactly what's going on. Mom, you can't do that. They'll fire her. She's the best teacher in the whole school. I imagine that they will fire her. Mom. Listen to me. I'm going to be graduating in a couple of months. What's going on between Linda and myself has nothing to do with her ability to teach school or me in school. What's the point of going to the school board? You'll be starting a scandal. I'm not starting anything. I'm putting an end to it. Mom! Okay, okay, okay. Look, 
I'll stop. Don't go to the school board, please. You'll just ruin her life. There's no point in that. I'll stop. I can give you my word. You really care about this woman, don't you? I love her. Did it occur to you that if she really cared about you, she'd have thought about the consequences? Oh. She probably shouldn't be a teacher at all. Paul, I am sorry. But if it's not you, then it'll be some other boy. She's not like that. God, how can you take the word of these pigs who don't even have the guts enough to sign their names to those letters? Because I am doing what I think is Girl. right. I, I am a parent, and this is wrong. A teacher should not be involved with her students. I started it! Well, I don't want to hear any more about it! So all you care about is what the neighbors think. Why don't you at least have enough courage to admit Mom, you go to the school board, all right, and you tell them. But let me tell you something. You're going to be doing a whole lot more damage to your relationship with your son than my relationship to my teacher. I suppose that's possible. Yeah. knows about us and she says she's going to go to the school board you better have a plan how did she find out oh somebody wrote some letters and forgot to sign them i've lived in this town my entire life and it can be a pretty nasty place let me worry about it why should i do that because it's my problem oh no this is our problem okay it's our problem but it's my responsibility it's our responsibility fine paul it's our responsibility but you must let me handle it we are in this together paul nobody is going to believe that i don't believe it that's the same thing my mother said that i'm just some kid you're trying to take advantage of is that what this whole thing is i want to know now no that's not what's going on my god how can you say that to me I am trying to figure out the best way to handle this. By excluding me? Is that the best way? Paul, you're my student. There's no point in involving you. I am involved. Would you just listen to me? It's going to be my fight. Fine. It is your fight. I'll see you in school, Mrs. Rivers. of the way Europe looked in 1941, just about the time Roosevelt was making his four freedom speech. I won't expect you to be able to draw these maps. I just want you to have an idea of why Americans felt so safe. Mrs. Rivers, excuse me, class. May I just have a quick word with you, please? Thank you. Uh, Mark, 
Go ahead to Pearl Harbor and stop, and I'll be right back. Okay? <clears throat> I've been instructed by the school board to present you with these warnings. Using a school telephone without proper permission. Drinking soda pop in the classroom. Excessive and repeated tardiness to class and leaving the classroom on it. What is this? Oh. I see. I think you'd better get back to your classroom now. Getting ambitious now, are you? Is it okay if I move on to it? Yeah, sure. Man, did you ever fall in love with an older woman? Ah, you can't go by me. My first wife, she was uh, five years older. That lasted for four years. And number two, I had a couple of years in her. And the last time, well, we didn't bother getting married. She was a lot younger than me. She walked out of me. No, you can't go by age. You gotta go by how much you love them. I tell you to get lost. You do everything you can to get them back. So that you won't be sorry afterwards for not having tried. And put your money in a separate account. Thank you. I think I'd rather stand. Now, as you know, a tenured teacher must be on record as having been warned of three violations prior to his or her dismissal. Suspension. Yes, yeah, suspension. So yesterday I received my warnings and today I'm suspended. That's very neatly done. You better not sass off to anybody around here. You're in deep trouble. And George? Mr. Coroner, do you believe these charges? No, it's not up to the principal. Excuse me, may I... Do you believe these charges? I believe they have some validity. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been made. Three months ago, you recommended me for tenure. And now you think that I've committed behavior unbecoming the teacher, possible immoral conduct. Really doesn't make you a very good judge of character, does it? We all make mistakes. Ah. 
report. That's good. Look, I might have used the telephone without permission, and I might have taken a soda pop into my classroom on occasion. I might even have left my class unattended for as long as it takes to go to the restroom. If that's, co if that's behavior unbecoming a teacher, then I might be guilty of that. Then what the hell do you call having but a But I have never you? in my life corrupted the morals of another human being. Mm, that's what I call it. Now, George, you'll have ample opportunity to defend yourself. You bet I will. Please have all your belongings out of the building by 3.30. I won't waste a moment. And please don't hesitate to burn my desk and my chair. that can teach worth a damn in the whole place. They were told that I've been dating one of my students. The one who fixed my night table? Have you been favoring him in class, is that it? No, he's a good student. Damn it, I shouldn't have let it happen. I should have seen. Nonsense, <laughs> no. Do you love him? <laughs> Do you? <laughs> yes. Well, then, how in the Lord's name are you expected to see anything? Don't punish yourself, darling. Look to the future. I haven't done anybody any harm. No. I didn't mean to fall in love. But I sure didn't try, and it's not exactly the way I would have planned it. Oh. He's eight years younger than I am. Oh. It just took me by surprise. And your young man? It's not his problem. You fight him. You fight him and you'll whip him. I love you, Grand. <laughs> Bless you. I just wanted to say that I am sorry. It's all right. I'm sorry. I missed you. How are you? I'm awful. When's the hearing? I don't know yet. I don't want you to go through this alone. I know that. Do you have an attorney? I think I get one through the union. I told you she'd do it, didn't I? I thought maybe if I went to talk to her, it might help. <laughs> She's nuts. She's not nuts. We are nuts. This isn't supposed to happen. What? We're not really supposed to fall in love. Are you all right, dear? Who's there? It's Paul Grant. Who, dear? something funny about it? No, no, no. Excuse me, Mrs. Rivers. It... I'm smiling at the stupidity of it. They suspended you without pay. That's illegal. Regardless of the charges which we will get to, they must pay a suspended teacher. It's state law. Now, if you will tell me what you want. I want to teach. 
I want to teach. That may even benefit us. I think that I am entitled to a private life. Uh, this has turned into a circus. It's based on speculation and gossip, and I want the charges dismissed. I want to suggest to you, sir, you'll have time to consider it. You'll probably have to resign, even if we get the charges dismissed. This is an unbearable atmosphere to work in. Well, it, I, I don't have to teach here. I just want to be able to teach. Now, the young man that you mentioned earlier, I think it's important that I know what your relationship is with him. Serious. How old is he? Eighteen. Eighteen, not a minor. That's good. Uh, did he come here with you? Yes, he's in your waiting room. Would you like him to be here to know what we're discussing? Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, I like it very much. Thank you. Sure. May please ask Mr. McCormick. McCormick to step into my office. So what did the lawyer say? He said he's going to subpoena the school phone records, every teacher who ever brought a can of soda pop into the classroom, parents, students. He's going to nail those school board creeps right to the wall. Wouldn't have to be enough room for the two of us over at Matt's boat, would there? I wish there was. She's going to go bananas, you know that. It's bad enough I had to go and lose a leg. Embarrass the whole damn family. Now you carrying on with an older woman moving out. You're a real disgrace, you know that. Oh, yeah. Paul. Hmm? Well, she must be something special. I have never seen you so serious before. Yeah, she's special. Hey, you remember Phyllis, the one you used to go out with? The oh, one with the big yeah. teeth? Oh, Phyllis. She's not at all like Phyllis. What do you mean by that? <laughs> you don't like Phyllis. You did then. I'm going to bust your face, man. You better duck it. I'll crash home. You're still in like a whole year. You're going to catch it. Watch it. Don't stop for me. I haven't heard you do laugh like that in ages. You going somewhere? Yep. Oh, for the weekend? No. I'm moving out. Where do you think you're moving to? On a match boat. Paul, you're not going anywhere. You did what you had to do, now I'm doing what I have to do. I won't have my son living under somebody else's roof. Well, you should have thought of that before you went to the school board, Mom. No, Paul. If I stay here, that means I agree with what you did. That's not what it means. Wait, and maybe you had some motivation for what you did, maybe. But I'm responsible for my own actions. That's what makes me a man. You are 18 years old. Right. And if you didn't think so much about what the neighbors thought and were a little bit more concerned about how I felt, maybe we would be showing each other a little bit more respect. When I believe in someone, Mom, I stand by him. I just don't throw him to the wolves for the sake of my reputation. If your father were here... None of this would have happened. Right. Are you going to live with that woman? Ah, uh, you know... And you will just keep your mouth shut. <clears throat> no. Not right now. All right. This means nothing to you, this town. Nobody in it. But it's bad enough. I have to go to the supermarket, and I hear people talking behind me, behind my back. It's humiliating. How do you think your father's going to feel? What are people going to say now? Most people in this town, Mom, will agree that you're doing your job. You're not leaving this house, I mean it. Get out of my way, Mom. Please.
keep me posted now, all right? Maybe I'll let you take me out for another beer. Only if you wash your socks. Yes, this is Mrs. Rivers. Listen, you creep, I'm having this call traced, and if you think that I can... Paul. No, I just got a threatening phone call. No, it wasn't the first one. It's the, uh, the second one. No, I'll be all right. They're going to change the number on Monday. Why are you still at the marina? You did? No, uh... No, I'm... I'm okay. You, uh... You just get a good night's sleep. And, um... And I'll see you tomorrow. Me too. Good night. He really did it. Mature he is, he is still a teenager. It is inexcusable. Sooner or later, we were going to be called on to support that woman. You mark my words, she's not going to be able to ride this out alone. She's going to need us. I, I, I don't agree. You what? She's not that kind of person. She doesn't go around seducing men. Mr. Wembley, are you trying to suggest that she... Linda Rivers is an excellent teacher. And she's a responsible person. I agree that if something happened between her and a student, and I say if because nothing's been proved, well, it shouldn't have happened. Well, I hardly see how we disagree. We must stay in control of our feelings at all times for students. But events are not always within our control. Sometimes, Mrs. Archer, life creeps up on us in mysterious ways. And these two guys had him up against the locker, and then two friends of his came over and stopped it. It was, you know, he got out of it, but... Well, anyway, Linda, I just thought you'd want to know, you know, that he hasn't been that easy for Paul at school either. Well, all right. he can handle himself pretty well. I appreciate it, though. Thank you. The important thing is, how are you? Really? Okay. I'm not okay. I'm awful, terrible, lousy, uh, not so bad. You can just about take your choice. <laughs> you know what? Everyone at school is behind you, the faculty and everything. Everybody? No, <clears throat> everybody. Everybody. No, Every not everybody. Every single body. No, old lady Higgins, the math department thinks you should be gassed. <laughs> and also the gym teachers, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> they want to organize Bayview Morality Day to uh, support the uh, school board. But otherwise, everybody. Will you testify for me if I need you? Testify for you? <clears throat> sure. What about? About the sodas and the tardiness and the... Um, 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 Phone, uh, just all mm -hmm. of that stuff. Just tell them that it's all normal stuff and everybody does it. Except, well, I'm not really ever tardy, so. We'll probably won't even come up. Yeah. The hearing's set for tomorrow, but my lawyer thinks they may back back off. Yeah. Yeah, I use that payphone too. <laughs> I mean, I know it's just a habit, but I, I do. Oh, Linda, listen, I, I will do anything for you, honest. It's just that... Just wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just what? Well, I don't have tenure, Linda, and that's really rough. I'd be putting my job on the line if I testify. Yeah. Well, just exactly what can I count on you for, Harley? Linda, you can count on me for anything you want behind the scenes. I'm a coward, Linda. <laughs> Stop, Dad. Then the guy from the tow truck told me that they were slashed. In the middle of town, in the middle of the day. I'm not even through yet. I got into the truck, he's gonna give me a lift to the garage, and he looks at me. I mean he looks at you. I mean he looks at me. I'm wrong. He stared at me. He stared at me. And he kept on staring at me. And he didn't say anything until finally he said, You're that teacher from the school, aren't you? I don't want this stuff to bother. It oh. You know what bothers me? It just bothers me that it makes me so crazy. I've been doing some thinking and I reached a decision. Uh, I'm getting there. I'll be working here for the next couple of months, and I'll be able to save uh, you know, a couple thousand dollars. Maybe with your school checks, or you could get a job teaching. I thought in the fall, uh, you know, nothing fancy or anything. I thought maybe we could get a house. Want us to get married. Oh. What are you looking at me like that for? You know what you're saying, you know. I want us to get married. For. Oh, you're crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm nuts. Oh, I'm waiting for that pan. Yeah, just a second, man. I'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to answer me right now. I want you to think about it. 
all right? But just tell me, you're not saying no right now. I mean, you're definitely not saying no. 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 I mean, <laughs> no. No. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta go. I'll talk to you later, all right? salary issue. Then we'll move on to discuss the charges. Okay? okay. Yeah. Never does any harm to keep them waiting a bit. Usually brings out the best in them. <clears throat> I realize that. I understand that. Don't you? Superintendent of the district schools, I've been asked to chair this hearing. Everybody here is a member of the Bayview Park School Board, except Mr. Ritchie, who's the attorney for the board. Shall I read the charges? No, we're familiar with the charges. Before we respond to anything on this sheet, I must tell you right now, this board is in violation of state law. It is illegal to suspend a teacher without pay. Well, there are a lot of illegal things going on around here. It's what we're trying to clear up. Before the illegalities can be cleared up, sir, there's a question of her I basic rights. I have advised rights. the board of the situation, Mr. Barnes. You have? You realize this can't be done? We realize plenty. Nobody's getting any tax dollars who's corrupting our children. Now, just a minute. Please, uh, uh, please, let's, let's keep this orderly, okay? The board, the board prefers to handle it in this manner, Mr. Barnes. I see. Very well. I'll notify the Commissioner of Education immediately. My client has no intention of participating in a hearing under these circumstances. What the hell is going on? Can you go? Yeah, go down. 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 Well, let me tell you something, young man. Before we were willing to settle for $10,000 damages and dismissal of all charges, you just made that a thing of the past. Oh, oh, one more thing. The press and people seem to be hearing about these charges. They're supposed to be sealed charges. So I suggest you watch your clients. You watch them carefully. Good night. My dear, we just had an excellent evening. Nice run, Dad? Yeah, good. Not bad. This is some boat. You got yourself into quite a mess. You'll straighten out okay. Why don't you come home with me after work? I can't do that, Dad. The mother's climbing the walls. She says she's disgraced. Is that how you feel? Me? What the hell do I have to be disgraced about? It's your business who you fall in love with. 
I tried to tell her that. To no avail, I might add. Without rehashing the whole thing, you feel it's impossible to come home again? I'll understand if it is, truly. I asked her to marry me. Is that a fact? Well... Congratulations, then. Thanks, dear. Soon? She hasn't said yes yet. I'll just have to tell her, won't I? Think about driving a rig, Paul. At least it keeps you out of the house. Say, how about a drink? And Matt, we'll go get your brother, too. You fine? Well, I mean, I'm sure you're not. Mrs. McCormick, I'm Linda Rivers. I'm sorry to disturb you, but I wanted to tell you two things, and I didn't think the telephone was the right way to do it. First of all, I want to tell you that I love Paul. I love him deeply, and we have a serious relationship. And secondly, I want to apologize for any anguish that we may have caused you. Thank you for listening to me. That's, that's really all. Mrs. Rivers. Yes? Are you divorced? My husband was killed three years ago in a plane crash. I don't like you. I don't like what you've done. But I want you to know I realize that it took some doing for you to bring yourself over here. Good day. of education carries the force of a legal injunction. Regler? Yeah, yeah, George. I heard, I heard. Young man, we don't care about somebody down at the state house telling us what to do. This is our town. Yeah. Yes, sir. And we know what's best. Most of us are second and third generation, Bayview. We go back, and we mean to preserve the morality here. Chancellor or no chancellor. Look, I'm only trying to tell the board what the legal ramifications are yes, here. Yes, Mr. Ritchie, listen. You were hired to give us legal advice. Why don't you just give it to us and let us decide what to do with it? Nobody's trying to tell you not to give us advice. You hear? I do, Mr. King. Okay, Mrs. Smithers. I don't like to go against the law, but there comes a time when you have to stand up for what you think is right, no matter what. It's a matter of conscience, isn't it? Sure. Yeah. And when it comes to giving money to that... Well, it just is contrary to all I believe in. And that's what I was elected for. I know what she's talking about. All right. Now, to state the agreement around this table, this town is not interested in supporting a whore. That's all there is to it. Now, if the governor wants to send down the National Guard, we'll deal with them when they get here, all right? Right. Meeting adjourned. I'm from KBC News. We've learned that you've been suspended for having an affair with one of your high school students. Could we have your comment on the charges? Well, is it true that you'll be having a hearing? I have no comment. Mrs. Rivers, please. Okay, guys. Get a close up on it. Stay close. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. Yeah, well, I'm well, the 
just have a couple of this afternoon. This is in the bay. Oh, it's not a place. And Cutter and Helen. Staying over at her house? The whole thing. The mother told me just the two of them. What do you want? The whole student body? It's enough to make you sick. A woman like that. Teaching a great And the money. Well, I'll tell you one thing. We're not giving that tramp one dollar. Not one single dollar. I have to get out of here. I don't care if she's telling you about it. Hello, Miss Gilbert. Hello. I feel just as well. And I think we have to do something. Yes, That doesn't matter. Linda Rivers, or I used to be, and um, I know you represent her. Um, what's your name, please? Uh, Mr. Boynes, my name isn't important, but um, I think what I have to tell you is... I've got it all, and I thank you very much, but I must tell you, without your identity, this is nothing more than hearsay. It's not going to stand up in the court of law. Would you please reconsider and tell me your name? No, Mr. Boynes, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, that would be very damaging to my own situation. You know, I'm not in a position to... I understand, but this is absolutely essential for her. Is it really necessary? Absolutely. Oh, what the hell. My name is Arlene Gilbert. I'm a teacher at Bayview Park High School. And I'm an idiot. Mr. George Kearney. Yeah? I hope you're not selling something at 8 o'clock Sunday morning. No, I'm not, sir. Good day. for slander and defamation of character. Get me my coffee. Uh, uh, Jack, listen, I just got this summons for... You got one, too. The other board members? Well, listen, Jack. No, I don't want to call in a board lawyer on this. He gets excitable over nothing. You give it to me straight. There's nothing to worry about, is there? Right. All right. Get the others together and we'll meet down at the school. All right. Let me know what time. Let's hurry up and get in. Thank you. 
Hi. Mother knows. Somebody sent her a newspaper clipping. She said it's the first time she's ever been glad my father isn't alive. She was always such a comforting woman. <laughs> One of the benefits of living a long time is perspective. This will pass. I guarantee it. Grant, how would you feel about moving away from here? Paul and I talked about it. I want to know how you feel. Oh, Linda. If you and Paul start a life together, there'll be no place for a third party, no matter where you live. No. You will not go there. Go where, dear? The place you had sent me the brochures, Gran. I went to look at it. I figured if you wanted it that badly, I should at least see it. And I'll tell you, I'll strap you to the bedpost before I let you go there. Good for you. <laughs> well, then, you just find a nicer spot. Few people have been through what you've been through. And you'll be all the stronger because of it. You already are. Do I have a choice? Promise me you'll look for a place that meets with your approval. I promise you I'll look for another place that meets with my approval. Hello. Yes. Hi, Mr. Boynes. Sure, I could come down. Around 11. Okay, that'll be all right. I had a call from Mr. Ritchie this morning. Seems the school board's had a change of heart. Being sued for slander and libel apparently encouraged fast, hard thinking. So they want to settle. Good. It will be good, I can assure you. Now, they, they've offered us what we originally sought. Dismissal of all charges, letter of recommendation, $10,000 settlement in exchange for your letter of resignation. Fine, I'll accept that. My dear, this is only the beginning. We will get you a lot of money. You deserve it. No, please. I just want this whole thing to be over with. I don't care about money. And all this garbage. They will stay off the record, so she will be able to teach again? The record will be expunged. The letter will be flattering, complimentary. You don't think I'm going to be able to teach again, do you? Wait a second. He just said you're getting a letter of recommendation. Mr. Boynes, it's the only thing I've ever wanted to do with my life. Superintendents seem to know each other across the country. A phone call is made. But nothing will be on the record. Precisely. So the chances are another applicant will simply be found more qualified. You knew this at the beginning. Why didn't you tell us then? You know, we didn't ask Mr. Boynes to get me a new job. We asked him to have the charges dismissed, and he's done that. You've been very good to us, Mr. Boynes. You've really been a friend. Well, I just want you to know that I'm not going to give up without a fight. Somehow I'll teach again. I don't know where and I don't know how, but I'm a teacher, and so I'll teach. I hope so, Mrs. Rivers. And you know that money that you were talking about? Well, I think maybe you'd better try to get as much of it for us as you can. We're going to need it. We're going to get married. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. Well, we'll expect you to be there. You have my word. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Good luck. surprised me when you said we were getting married and invited him to the wedding. <laughs> I'd like to have been the first person invited. I'm sorry. Don't be. I feel real good. It's good. You knew about this all along, maybe not teaching, hmm? I wish I'd realized it. I just don't want this to interfere with anything later on. Oh, it won't. No. We're in this together. And we're going to fight this together, right? We're going to fight it together, that's right. Mr. McCormick. Mrs. McCormick? <laughs> Alice, 
Sarah Matucci. How do you get all of those? Sterling Malloy. <laughs> Doreen Francis Olson. John Francis Lopat. Neil Harold Lotta. Melody Carmody Nunn. David Ronald Overman. Virginia Susan Malone. Paul Robert McCormick. Senior class, all that remains is for us to wish you well in the future and hope you won't forget us here at Bayview Park High. for a celebration drink, just for an hour or two. I'm afraid I can't do that, Mom. I understand. We'll talk to you later, son. Okay, Dad. CBS Late Movie, George Hamilton and Beatrice Strait star in Killer on Board, the terrifying story of panic on a luxury ship. And Friday on the CBS Late Movie, Jack Nicholson, Faye Dunaway and John Huston star in Chinatown, Roman Polanski's Academy Award winning mystery of love and corruption. That's Killer on Board Wednesday, Chinatown Friday. Always.